GearSwap is part of an add-on suite known as Windower. These days, most of the players that play Final Fantasy XI use either Windower or Ashida. The two programs share a lot in common, however, their add-ons and plugins are generally not compatible. Instead of getting into the weeds about the differences between the two, we're just going to talk about GearSwap. GearSwap is an add-on that emulates the function of in-game macro. Or at least, that's a more simple way of looking at it for the layman. More specifically, it changes gear in response to player actions. Typically, a file will have precast sets, midcast sets, engage sets, weapon skill sets, and idle sets. You may be asking, if this was all possible in-game using gear sets and macros, then why does GearSwap exist? The newer players may be surprised to learn that equip sets haven't always existed. Equip sets were introduced to the game in August of 2014. By this time, GearSwap had already developed some traction in the community. Not to mention Spellcast, which preceded GearSwap. GearSwap and Spellcast came largely from necessity. After several expansions with increasing difficulty, many of the seasoned players of the game had picked up several jobs and had too many pieces of gear to swap out with a set of macros that would only allow you to change five pieces of gear at a time. The first attempt at solving this problem was Spellcast. Spellcast, of course, had its own problems. While being more powerful than in-game macros, it was actually even less user-friendly. This is not to mention the fact that Spellcast only fixed one of the two problems at the time. Even with Spellcast, sometimes handling different idle sets and engage sets and other conditional sets could be a bit of a pain, likely still requiring that player to have several macro palettes for one job. And to make matters worse, players only had 20 macro books to begin with. So it made sense that the more elite players were using Spellcast to try and make the most of the macro slots that they did have. GearSwap handled the problem by allowing toggles for idle sets, engage sets, weapon skill sets, precast and midcast sets both for spells and job abilities, and you had a freedom to bind that toggle either to your keyboard or you could just make it dependent on a conditional statement in the Lua. While I intend to go over the more complex functions of GearSwap at some point in a later video, the purpose of this video is just to get it working in the first place. GearSwap's easy to install, just click this slider next to where it says GearSwap in the add-on section. The harder part is figuring out where your data folder is. In my opinion, the best way to do this is to figure out where your Windower folder is located, which is usually in your program files on your C drive, but it depends on where you installed it. If you have a shortcut to it on your desktop, simply right-click it and open file location. Once you've found your Windower folder, go ahead and back up one level, so that way you can pin it to your quick access menu. While you're at it, we want to open the GearSwap folder and put the data folder in there also in our quick access menu. This makes a quick and easy path back to all of our job files and exports. Please note it is highly recommended to use Notepad++ for editing instead of the normal Notepad built into Windows. The regular Notepad has very high contrast and doesn't really have any good formatting options. But if that's not reason enough, it doesn't have any coding language support which will make finding mistakes very difficult. When you're ready to begin, simply look up Alua for the job you want online. A Google search will lead you to GitHub, which is where most people get their files from. However, we're going to be making our own. Though you could make one completely from scratch, what we're going to do is convert a RuneVincer file into a Paladin file. You can just copy-paste it into a new file, but be aware that whenever you do this, you need to save the new file as Alua, otherwise the formatting will not look correct. When you're new to a job, it's a good idea to get rid of any sets that you either don't use or can't use, but make sure to leave the space for the set there. It's actually pretty easy, you just delete everything between the braces. Make sure to leave the braces there, though. Just really quickly so you can tell them apart in the future. These are parentheses, these are braces, and these are brackets. They are each different kinds of what are called block delimiters. Programming languages rely very much on delimiters in order to make their logic work properly. Apostrophes and quotations are also forms of delimiters. Just keep in mind that this is essentially going to work like a pairing game. Parentheses must always be paired with parentheses, brackets always with brackets, apostrophes always with apostrophes, etc, etc, etc. Chances are if you're new to this and you're just replacing your gear over somebody else's file, you're probably going to be making this mistake more than any other mistake. Now, this ties back into why we were discussing using Notepad++ earlier. 
the different block delimiters will actually be different colors depending on whether or not they actually are paired. Let me show you an example. In my style configurator in Notepad++, that is, the settings menu that controls how it looks, like the background color and the text color, good braces are colored in yellow on both sides of the term, and bad braces will show up in red if it doesn't have something to pair with. To do this yourself, you just go ahead and open the settings tab on that upper menu bar, and then click on style configurator. It'll bring up a box that looks like this. Under the global style, you will find where you can change your global background color. You can change that by clicking this enable global background color button. And then, in order to highlight your bad braces, under style, there is a setting called bad brace color. You want to change that to something noticeable, like red, or something different than your normal brace highlight style color. And finally, there are a few other things we want to change while we have this open. On the left hand side, you can see a list called language. You want to scroll down to Lua. And then under style, we want to change comment, comment line, literal string, processor, instruction word, number, string, character, and operators all to colors that are different than our background color and something that you can tell apart from each other. Alternatively, you can pick a theme that you like from the Select Theme menu, but just remember that this is going to have less precision than setting them yourself. Now that we have all of that taken care of, we can begin on our job file. Now, since I'm converting one job file into another job file, there's a lot of things that I'm going to be fast forwarding through and doing here that you won't have to do if you are simply putting your gear into somebody else's Lua, which is what I recommend doing the first time. The only reason I'm showing this step is to show that it is possible and it doesn't take as much time as you might think. The reason I'm modeling my Paladin Lua off of my Runefencer Lua is that I like all of my job files to behave very similarly, so it makes more sense for me to just model them all off of the same file, if you're competent enough to do so. Um, I wouldn't recommend starting off doing that, even though it's not that difficult, it's a little bit much to take in all at once. When you've found your job file and you've deleted all of the gear from all of the sets on that job file, we're ready to begin exporting. Exporting is a process where in-game you type a command, which is forward slash forward slash GS export, and it will export the gear your character is currently wearing into a file that will be inside the data folder in the gear swap folder, which is why we wanted to find where that was located earlier. Hopefully, you put it in your quick access menu. If not, then whenever you navigate there this time, go ahead and put it there, because you'll be going back there a lot. Now, what you're currently looking at is an export file. Every time you use the GS export function, it creates another one of these files, and it will lay out the gear vertically, each on their own line, which I actually recommend copying it this way and keeping it this way, so you don't have things running way off the side of the screen in your actual job file. It makes it easier to edit in the future. The next step is to go ahead and take that set that you copied from the export that you made and paste it in between the bracers in the job file. They should be empty since you removed everything before. In order to make sure you're putting the gear in the right place, you need to know what they all mean. Uh, it is fairly straightforward, but we'll go ahead and do a rundown real quick. Idle sets are gear that you wear when you're standing around. You don't have your weapon out and you're not casting or taking some sort of action. Engaged sets are the gear you wear whenever you do have your weapons out and you're attacking a target. Midcast sets are the gear that you will land your spells in. Precast sets are gear that you equip either before a job ability or right as a spell is starting to be cast. That way you can get the fast cast value out of that gear. And then weapon skill sets should be relatively obvious, I think. It just equips those sets as you're using a weapon skill. Now, I should have mentioned earlier that in order for one of these files to load properly, it needs to be in the correct directory. The same one we mentioned earlier, inside your window or four folder, inside of the gear swap folder, there is another folder called the data folder. 
I believe that you pinned that to your quick access menu if you've been following along. That is where all your job files need to go. They need to be inside that folder or they will not load. After you've finished copying all of your gear into the job file you're using, make sure to save it in Notepad++ and then we're going to go ahead and load it in-game. To do that, you will log into your character and once you're on the job that the file is for, you can either do forward slash forward slash gs space r or you can do forward slash forward slash gs space load space the name of the file that you just saved. At this point, some red text should appear in your console menu. That's this red text up in the top left of the screen. It will either say that it loaded the job file successfully, or it will show an error, what type of error, and in what section the error was made. Unfortunately, the notification it gives you is not always precise as to exactly where the error is, but it will point you in the right direction. I'll give you an example of that as well. So this is what encountering one of those errors will generally look like. You try and load the file, and then at the top of the screen, instead of saying that it loaded the job file, it will say that there's a problem in the file. In this case, at line 175. This is an unexpected symbol near that closing bracer. Let's go figure out what it's talking about. As you can see on line 175, uh, where there's sets.medcast.enmity, there's a good set of closing brackets, and then there was two extra closing brackets and an extra comma that didn't need to be there. Once we get rid of that, we can reload the job file, but that's no guarantee that it'll load properly. And as you can see, it kicks back another error. This one's a little more complicated than the one before, because it says that the issue is at line 476, but then it says it failed to close function at line 64. This is usually a sign that you forgot to put an end somewhere, but since we were just copy-pasting over gear, it's more likely that we accidentally overwrote one. If we go to line 64, you'll see that there's a function there that doesn't end, so we're going to follow this red line down until we find the next function. There should be an end between this function and the start of another instruction. So I come down to this section where there's some instruction words for how to handle movement. I want to make sure that I put an end before all of this, after where all of my gear is. And as you can see, the red line on the left will terminate as soon as I put the end there. Then whenever I move back to the game and try and reload the file again, it loads successfully this time. If you encounter a problem you can't seem to fix, you can PM me in Discord, I'll leave my information in the video description. Just know that since I'm no expert programmer myself, I may not have the answer to your question, but I will try and find you help if I can. Another note is, your job file may look and behave slightly differently from mine. Mine are using Motentens globals. Um, if they're not using Motentens globals, then all of your job set names and things might be a little bit different, but for the most part, what you're looking at and dealing with should be pretty similar to what I was doing. Also, I apologize for the inconsistent volume and microphone quality in this video. My microphone's been bugging out all week, so sorry for that. That's the end for this video. I'll see you guys next time.